Okay, let's talk about Rust, uh, that, this movie that Alec Baldwin was making when he shot cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Um, he pointed the gun. He denies that he actually pulled the trigger. He was shooting a scene. He did not expect the gun to be loaded. I think we can give him all that, but there's still a question about whether he was criminally negligent in handling it and pointing it at her. And we believe pressing the trigger, though he, again, denies that. This is the trial of the armorer, uh, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, who she's gone first now uh, uh, as a criminal defendant. And it's underway today. They're picking the jury. And they're going to say, Marsha, that she had an obligation to make damn sure there were no live rounds on that set, never mind one in the gun next to the dummy rounds that was handed to Baldwin. So how do you like the chances the prosecution has against her? And how do you think this is going to affect Baldwin, who comes second? He comes after her. Right. So that's really important. This order is going to make a big, big difference. And it's a big score for Alec Baldwin. He gets to see how the case plays out. He gets to see how the witnesses who are going to be some of the same witnesses called in his trial, how they play to the jury. Where are the weak spots? Where are the strong spots? Those lawyers for Alec Baldwin, I promise you, are going to be either in court or watching the footage, if it is telecast, uh, avidly taking notes constantly and consulting with each other about what to what to hit, what points to miss, what, you know, exactly how to structure their case. So they're getting to go to school on her on her trial. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of how it plays out against her, it depends on how her defense lawyers are able to show others were involved. Others could have basically set her up for the fall by putting the live rounds without her knowing about it on set or in the gun. It seems unlikely that they would prevail this way because she's the armor. It is her ultimate duty to make sure that any firearms are properly maintained and kept on set. And so it would be her duty also to check and make sure that no live rounds are there. So no matter who might have slipped in live rounds, and I don't believe anybody did it on purpose, um, but you know, by accident slipped in some live rounds. Uh, and then of course it comes down to how negligent was she in not catching that mistake? Mm -hmm. uh, what I wonder is why any live rounds were even available because you don't need them. Uh, if you think there's a big difference in the sound, then go put them, don't ever bring them to set, go shoot them somewhere else and see if you can really detect the difference in terms of the recording capabilities. But I don't see any reason why any live rounds should be there. So there are other people involved. That's where the defense for the armorer will go. They stuck them in there, and I didn't have a chance to look. And by the way, she's she going to, and she's also going to suggest she's yeah, she's going to suggest that the guy uh, Seth Kenny, who provided the rounds, who was he was supposed right. to give her the ammo. She can't. She she's ultimately responsible for the the guns and the ammo on set, but somebody's got to supply them. She says it was this guy. They're already yes. pointing the finger at him, but he hasn't been charged. Yes. But the thing is, Mark, the prosecution, I guess, is going to start arguing that she was boozing. Quoting here from the New York Post and using marijuana and cocaine, including the night before Alec Baldwin fatally shot Hutchins. Um, the judge in the case in New Mexico ruled that the special prosecutors, prosecutors can present text messages in which she alluded to drug use during her time off the set, uh, but right around the time of the shooting. And even after the police interviewed her, there's a suggestion that she gave a friend a small white bag or a bag with a white substance saying, keep it safe just for hours. After, just hours after she was questioned. So they're going to try to paint her as, you know, drugged up, irresponsible. There's an allegation she had live rounds in her hotel room. Um, and, you know, the jury probably will want someone to blame. This is not like the laundry parents. She actually did have some responsibility for this gun. Yeah, and you have somebody squarely who was supposed to be responsible. I, I, you, Your producer sent me something that I did not know, which was apparently the prosecution is also trying to not let her use her own name or the name that she's now calling Reed. herself, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. I, I suspect that if I'm um, Alex Spiro or the, one of the Quinn Emanuel lawyers who's representing Baldwin, that you're going to be doing mock juries after every single witness and see how they play out and, and who they want to blame and what they're going to say. 
Uh, I think that this is even better. Marsha will probably tell you normally a prosecutor loves the second trial because it gives them the advantage. They know exactly what the defense is going to do in the first trial. Here, you may flip it on its head. This is something that they welcome. I mean, they don't welcome, obviously, Alex Baldwin being indicted a second time, but they welcome the idea of getting a dry run, seeing what people are going to testify to, and watch and see if she takes the stand, because I think she's in a position where she may be kind of forced to do that. Yes, she. I think she probably will take the stand. I mean, how else is she going to cast, you know, the finger at everybody else? Because she's going to blame the guy who supply, supplied the ammo, and she's definitely going to blame like the prop supplier, um, the the person who oversaw the set and was supposed to like manage everything on set and practice time. And she's already saying that Alec Baldwin didn't take the practice time with her seriously enough. He was distracted. He was on his phone the whole time. So I can see how this plays in a civil case, right? Like you have to apportion responsibility. I, the armorer, maybe I have 30% responsibility, but deep pocket Alec Baldwin has the other 70. But in a criminal case, I don't know that any of that matters. Discover a holistic wellness solution with Bond Charge, a brand dedicated to optimizing every aspect of your life. Grounded in science and inspired by nature, their evidence-based products cover a broad spectrum of premium wellness items. From enhancing sleep and performance to boosting energy, accelerating recovery, and balancing hormones, Bond Charge offers a diverse range of benefits. Consider the infrared sauna blanket from Bond Charge that they say can burn extra calories and detoxify. This innovative blanket elevates your heart rate, simulating the effects of physical exercise. Bond Charge says sweating during the process helps eliminate heavy metals and toxins from your body. Setting it up takes less than a minute and it rapidly heats up for a quick and convenient experience. For a limited time, save 15% by visiting bondcharge.com MK and use the coupon code MK. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash MK and use that coupon, coupon code MK to save yourself 15% off your order. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.